Hello, today's video is going to be a little different. It is the end of June here and I'm going to take you through our summer garden because we're just at the beginning and I feel like if I don't document it now, you're probably not going to see it at this beautiful stage. We're still early in the summer, but there's lots of good stuff to see. So let me give you a tour of our summer garden. For our garden, I have decided to do a mixture of vegetables and flowers. I'm doing this primarily because vegetables are very practical and it's good for us to be growing vegetables because that's the food that we're actually going to be able to eat and sustain ourselves from. But I just can't hide away from flowers. Flowers are so beautiful and not only do they make a garden look beautiful, but they can also make our homes look beautiful. And I'm already thinking ahead at Christmas decor and any future parties, birthdays and celebrations and thinking what kind of flowers would grow well that I could either host an event with beautiful flowers or dry the flowers and use them later on for gifts or celebrations like I said. So flowers and vegetables have to be both in our garden and you'll see that this is a pretty scattered garden because I'm trying to both do flowers and vegetables not only in certain sections, but all together in a mix alongside of each other. And I think that this is actually really good because not only will it attract pollinators to my vegetables to make those plants grow better, but it actually is kind of how things are in nature. We don't see a strip of tomatoes and a strip of potatoes necessarily all close together. In nature, plants are interplanted. And so while I'm just trying to do both for practical purposes and decoration purposes, I'm actually also doing it because it is beneficial for the plants to grow this way. I'll start you over here with the poppies, which this year I have an array of poppies. I believe this is a mix of California poppies, and then over here we've got some purple and red varieties. I'll pop down their names if you're interested in that. Lots of poppies this year, which isn't really all that practical to have in the garden because they're not great cut flowers and once you pick them they die pretty soon afterwards. Although they make the garden look beautiful and they will attract lots of pollinators, so it is good for the garden in that sense. And of course they look beautiful around this season as we're just getting started in the summer. They're one of our first flowers that blooms very prolifically. Now I should tell you before we go any further that we've got four garden beds. The beds aren't anything fancy, they haven't been boarded up or made into bins. Rather we've just removed grass in areas and put lots of soil so we can grow directly into the ground. And then we've put up an arch trellis where we grew our tomatoes last year and we're going to grow a mix of things this year. And then we've got another cattle panel and I'm going to tell you more about that later in this video. So in these four beds, like I said, we're doing a mix of vegetables and flowers all over. So let me walk you through kind of what that looks like in reality. So our tomatoes over here are slowly climbing this arch. We're at the end of June and last year it was already very hot by now, but right now our season is just actually warming up. So our tomato plants are actually only starting to do really well right now, which is fine. They're gonna hopefully have a long enough season where we can get enough cherry tomatoes and at least some big tomatoes that have colored, hopefully. Along our trellis, I also this year planted some sweet potatoes, cucumbers, and winter pumpkins. We'll see how that all fills in on this trellis. And I've also this year started them on both ends right away, whereas last year we only did tomatoes on one end and cucumbers on the other. And they were kind of offset, which shaded later parts of the season. This season we're starting both sides of the trellis right away so that they can kind of grow together and nothing is shadowing each other out, if you can follow what I'm saying. And we've also got a mix of plants, like I said, the tomatoes, the sweet potatoes, cucumbers, and the winter squash. And I'll see how those plants all grow together. And it's probably gonna be a bit jam-packed, but we're hoping to uh, prune our tomato plants really heavily and anything else so that there's enough air movement happening and plants don't get diseases, but that we can pack a lot of stuff on this trellis and make really good use of growing upward, which if you don't know about vertical growing, if you've got a small, or a limited amount of space that you can grow a step. Vertical growing is the way that you want to go because you're creating a lot of root for your plants to branch out on, which most plants just want some kind of ground to start their roots in, but further than that, they can just grow above ground as far as you'll let them and they don't take up much room 
um, down on the ground. So tomatoes are great for that, any kind of trellising, cucumbers or pumpkins, and sweet potatoes, this will be kind of a tester this year because I've only seen sweet potatoes growing on the ground, but they do trellis, so we'll see how they pan out and how that works with sweet potatoes that need to grow underground but the leaves and the branches that can trellis. I'm not really sure yet, we'll see how that goes. Now moving away from the trellis, this year I decided to decorate the edges of the trellis with sunflowers all over to attract some pollinators, but also just to look beautiful, kind of finishing off this very rustic <laughs> looking thing, trying to hide it a little bit with as much plants as possible early on in the season, because it's kind of an eyesore. Walter this year actually spray painted the poles and the posts for me with black which has been helpful in kind of hiding away this structure while we wait for the plants to fill it in but anyway I'm decorating it also with some sunflowers which are growing very quickly this year and I believe they also add some nutrients to the soil so they're good to have kind of scattered all over the garden where you can but they also take nutrients from the soil so they'll give and they take I believe so don't overdo it. On one end of this trellis, I've also got some chickpeas growing, which is new for us this year. Just took a chance and planted some chickpeas, so we'll see how this plant grows. It has been growing very slowly, but it's got really interesting looking leaves, and I hope that we can at least grow some successfully so we can test out how to grow chickpeas. Last year we grew some quinoa for the first time, and I've got a bush coming up that was a volunteer from last year that's self-seeded and is coming up again this year, so that'll be nice to have that growing up again. It's nice to just see these foreign kind of plants that we wouldn't normally grow in a garden, but to see how they do grow and what the plant's nature is like, how fast it grows, what kind of temperature it likes, what the plant looks like once it's grown, how much you will need to actually make a meal. It's good to see all this stuff, even though we may not do all of that this season, it's good to learn about it. Now I've also got some onions growing here in the bed. These onions did not have a lot of time to grow indoors. I did not start them very early, so we'll just see how they pan out this season. I'll know for next season to start onions indoors very, very early. If you're starting them from seed, they need a lot of time to make these kind of green stems. So I've just put whatever I had in the ground and we'll see how far they'll grow by the end of the season. I'm not certain, but again, a learning experiment. We'll see how it goes. Now our kale is doing wonderfully. Our spinach has just gone to seed, so that's finished as we're warming up here. And then we've got a pea trellis that is doing fabulous this year. It did not do so well last year, but this year we had a much longer cool spring and cool early summer. So I think these peas are just loving it and they're giving us a great harvest this year. So I've actually got to come back and harvest a whole bunch of these and either do something with them in, the, in our meals all week or try to preserve them in some way so we don't lose them before the hot heat comes. Moving along to the potato bushes we've got here, they're doing really well. Also, they've just started to flower, these beautiful white and purple flowers, because we're growing a pink, a purple, and a nice white, I believe, little potatoes this year. These are gonna flower for the next several weeks, and we can start picking them, and then hopefully in a couple of months, start picking and letting them dry out before we store them for the fall and winter season. Got a selection of beets and carrots over here, slowly maturing up. The carrots aren't totally ready yet, although I do see some of their tops popping out of the ground, but I don't think they're ready for picking yet. I'll do another cycle of carrots again later in the season to carry us into the winter. And the peppers all took a really big hit once they were transplanted out in the garden. As you can see, they have been eaten by a ton of bugs. Next year I'll know to cover them because the bugs definitely went right for them. But it looks like they're going to pull through and I'm starting to see little flowers that's going to set fruit. So that's a good sign. The heat is finally giving them what they need to grow, which is good. Now we've got some volunteer Brussels sprouts that come up from last year. I planted some seeds, not all of them came up, and it's nice to see them come up this year. So that's a nice reward, especially because they take a long time to grow and it's hard for us to gauge when to plant them because if we plant them too soon, they'll just go to seed, and if we plant them too late, we won't have a crop ready into winter, early spring. So I'm, for safety, going to keep planting some seeds here just in case it gets too hot for these and they end up going to seed and we don't have a crop. Although the plants know well when to come up and when not to come up, so I'm 
thinking that this plant has known that this is a good time for it to start growing. Hopefully it will produce a crop for us in the fall, early fall, early winter. I've got a whole bunch of zinnias planted here. They're only tiny, tiny little seedlings right now. This is the second time that I planted all these zinnias because the first time they were all eaten by something. Either a squirrel or a bird ate them all. I could cover these with a cloth and get them to stay away, but the week that I planted these new zinnia seeds, it rained all week, so the predators seem to have stayed away that week and they have actually successfully popped up some seedlings, so that's a good sign. Hopefully we'll have some zinnia plants here in the next couple of weeks. They're my favorite flower and they're perfect for a cut flower and they will last about 10 to 15 days in a vase if you keep caring for it. So zinnias are basically the best cut flower that you can grow in your garden. So I'm looking forward to seeing these varieties come up this year. I'm not sure what these plants are. They just sort of came up and they didn't look like weeds. So I'm gonna let them grow and we'll see what they look like in the upcoming videos. Maybe I'll know by then what they are. And then lastly, I've got some kohlrabi over here that we started earlier in the spring are just starting to bulb up. Now I've grown kohlrabi last year for the first time and I'm doing it again this year because I wasn't really sure what to cook with it last year and they kind of ended up being woody and not all that tasty. So I'm giving them a second go and then hopefully we can actually harvest them this year and make some nice meals with them. Now I see this green one has already gone to seed which is an interesting thing to me because it means that these don't have a long enough time to grow in the cool before they go to seed when it gets hot. So I'm not sure if I can grow these in future. They may not work for our area, but I'll see if I pick these later on, if they're edible or if I can change something up to give them a longer growing season. It seems like it's just the green one that's gone to seed. So maybe the purple ones, that's a variety that can hold out in a little bit of heat, but the green one seems not to be one of those. And then I've just got one whole bed of flowers over here and my perennial herbs. Now scattered in between, which I'm not showing you here now, are little seedlings of pumpkins and zucchinis that are slowly starting to come up there, not anything exciting yet. So I'll check back with you on those in the following video next month. But again, keeping that inner mixture of flowers and vegetables as usual, but kind of trying to establish a perennial garden on the one side of this bed just so that those things can go to seed and come back every year in the same spot because that'll be nice <laughs> to not have to plant those every year, but to be able to rely on, for example, chamomile coming up in the same place, or Agashti mint, which is this beautiful minty, minty leaf and flower that bloom in late spring or early summer, and the bees just love it. We've also got some beautiful flowers that came up, which was such a surprise. The bush gave so much this year. From last year to this year, it almost doubled in size of these beautiful hollyhocks that I just adore. The lupins are just finishing up. It was nice to see this beautiful pink variety come back this year with some purples in a different bed. I don't believe I planted those, but <laughs> nice to have some volunteers anyhow. So this will be my flower bed, and then later it will be replaced with winter pumpkins coming up. Hopefully they will trellis on this trellis that we've got here. Well, thank you so much for joining our first garden tour of the season. Please check back a few weeks from now to see the progress and all the stuff and how it's grown. And we would love to have you stick around and join the community. Subscribe if you like content like this or other kind of homemaking videos. We make a lot of content around that, so it'd be nice to have you around. Well, thank you for joining us and I hope you have a good day. Bye.